Before this video starts, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who watched the last part of this. I'm glad everybody liked it. And to respond to some of your comments, nah. I ain't gonna read arc 3. Okay, so if you haven't watched my last video on this, go watch it or this won't make sense and I'm not gonna explain anything here. Now, I shall try and recite my knowledge of books 14 and 15 without having read them and only knowing a little bit about the plot. Book 14. We're back on Peri, I guess, and we're in the Icewing Kingdom where Queen Snowfall lives. She's our main protagonist for this book and she's a wee bit crabby. <laughs> You see, she had to become queen at a young age since her mom contracted Darkstalker's disease and died, so Snowfall is pretty upsetty spaghetti about that, but she still has to be the queen, so she's gotta conceal it. Huh. Wonder where I've heard that before. There it go! Unfortunately, Snowfall is an Icewing, and the Icewings live in this wacky little society where dragons are given a rank, but the lowest ranking ones have to go meet Peepaw Arctic after fighting his wife in the ice dungeons underneath their palace. Cause that's totally a normal thing to do. Anywho, everything is business as usual in the Icewing Kingdom, when suddenly a shitload of Silkwings appear and are like, It's free real estate. Snowfall hates this, so she goes into their cave full of magical items, grabs a few, and takes her army to remove the pest problem. Snowfall is about to spray some bug spray on the silk wings when suddenly Tsunami, Snoodoo, and Cricket show up and say, Hey, stop. How they got here? Great question. I don't have a f clue. Despite this, Snowfall forces them to leave, so they finally do, and then Snowfall suddenly decides, you know what, I don't really want to be queen. I'm gonna go follow the bug dragons for a couple days. So she and a couple other ice wings go with them, and they follow them to the Sandwing Kingdom, where they go to stay with this guy named Jabora. Jabora is a Sandwing Animus, but also isn't an Animus, because out of nowhere, Animus magic just stopped working so that toy can drag out the plot for another book. Jabora's like, yeah, I'm missing my fingers because my mom was kind of crazy, and now lots of people make art about me, so I'm popular. Hey! Oh yeah, and Luna is there, so Snoodoo fills her in on what happened. Apparently, Luna's brother Blue and her boyfriend Swordtail went insane at the end of book 14, and they're now part of the Empire because they wanted to become stormtroopers. Good for them. Snowfall watches all this happen and then decides to go to bed because she's sleepy, and she starts having these wacky fever dreams. What do you want from me? Freud would say she's stressed, but actually it's because one of the things she grabbed from the magical cave was a ring that gives her visions to make her a better person. Snowfall wakes up the next morning, grabs her friend Lynx, and tells her about all this, and Lynx is like, damn, that's goofy girl. So Snowfall goes for a walk to clear her mind, and she sees her older sister Crystal with a mudwing. Snowfall thinks this is bad, so she yeets the mudwing into the abyss, but then Crystal's like, no, that's my boyfriend, girl, stop! And Snowfall's like, oh, shit, my bad, and she pats her new brother-in-law on the head before going back to the bug dragon situation. So turns Turns out, Tsunami, being the bossy bitch she is, asked all the queens to show up, and they did, because Tsunami's a boss bitch. And then, um, there's a human there. There's a f human here. Why, why is there a human here? How did this thing get- oh, there was a book on that? Oh, yeah, I'm not reading that either. No way. Anyways, now because Toy, like me, has lost her marbles, she decides that Peril's brother, who is supposed to be dead, and a human are here, and the human is like, uh, yeah, I can totally help with this situation that I have no part in and no reason to be involved in. Yeah, totally. So then the queens all decide, okay, let's each send one dragon from our tribe to become Jedi Masters and defeat the Empire, and that'll help. It's really not my fucking problem. <laughs> I'm like, dude, what do you want from me? So they each pick out one dragon, and the only one I can remember is Pineapple because he's cool and dating Jambu. And then all the Jedi Masters go off to do their training. So Snowfall's no longer useful, so she goes home and realizes, oh shit, my aunt kind of started a dictatorship where she put my little baby sister in charge and now my baby sister's crazy. So she faints after realizing this, and an Icewing Animus shows up and is like, yeah, I died a long time ago, but now that the book is over and you fainted like 20 million times, even though Toast didn't talk about that, you little shit. You're gonna be a good queen now and make changes in the Icewing Kingdom. And Snowfall's like, wow, thanks girl. Snowfall then promptly wakes up from her final fever dream, grabs her baby sister, and has her watch as she takes a war hammer to the wall with everyone's ranks on it and gives some boomers a heart attack. Then she does a flip, everyone cheers, and the book ends. Book 15. Please just real quick read the text on the screen. So the Jedi Masters that were sent from Pyria are now in Patala, and they're doing their training. I looked them up just so I could put them on the screen for this. It's Sky the Skywing, Tsunami the Sea Wing, Bullfrog the Mudwing, Pineapple the Rainwing, Moonwatcher the Nightwing, Kibli the Sand Wing, Lynx the Ice Wing, Luna the Silk Wing, Cricket the Hive Wing, Sundew the Leaf Wing, and Ren. 
the human. This book is Luna's POV, and she's looking for her brother and her boyfriend since they joined the dark side and became stormtroopers. The group is going about their Jedi training when suddenly Luna sees this kid who is named Dusky, who is apparently important in earlier books, and the kid's like, Ich muss in die Unkraut Kavern gehen. And Luna is like, Nein, nein, kleine deutscher Junge, gehen in die Unkraut Kavern nicht. And jumps in after him. Then, a bunch of vines grab them both and they wake up in the abyss, where they see, um, an all wing and an old man with a beard. What? What the fuck? Wait, what the fuck is this book? There's an all wing and an all wings are canon now? Are you fucking kidding? So the all wings name is Lizard, and she likes violence because she's Uzi from Murder Drones, essentially. Fight me! And the old man's name is Cottonmouth. Cottonmouth means dry mouth. Like. It so then, I guess the scorching is explained through Dry Mouth Man. Apparently, humans used to like rule Pyrium Pantella, and they had like big cities and stuff. I'm not sure what time period they were in, but it sounds like they were in like modern civilization. But then, they would go out and kill dragons because they were worried that dragons would kill them. And at first, the dragons didn't give a shit because they could just hide in caves and castles and stuff. But then, the humans started stealing their eggs. Why? I don't know, maybe they wanted to make a big ass omelette or something. The dragon mamas all got pissed about this, banded together, and basically destroyed modern civilization as we know it. Then they just kind of moved into where the humans lived and started turning into the dragons from Wings of Fire. Cool. Dry Mouth Man was one of the dudes who was stealing the eggs, but he was a scientist, so he wasn't part of making the omelette, he was like experimenting and shit. He decided it would be a good idea to take a dragon, lizard, and sit down next to a giant plant. And then they both just appeared in the abyss and were like, well, guess we're stuck here. Oh hey, I can control this plant. So the plant is called the Breath of Evil, and I guess that's been really important in the last couple books. Um, Hawthorne, the guy who died, gave that to Queen Wasp, and then Queen Wasp got the ability. <laughs> and I guess it's like the reason why everything is going to shit, and it's not clear how it evolved, but it's just there. Dry Mouth and Lizard can just control people with it for some reason, and they're controlling Wasp Fader. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say that the Breath of Evil is the dark side. I guess. Just go with it. Luna is kind of put off by this, but then she's like, oh, I can just like see my friends and what they're doing with this. Turns out that the group got captured by Queen Wasp Fader, who is like, yo dudes, the empire's pretty chill. Maybe you could like join it or something. And they're like, um, no thank you. We're, we're perfectly fine right now. So after this point in the book, I only know for certain about one thing that happened. One thing. Therefore, from this point forward in this video, I will just be making shit up. So through the power of friendship, Blue and Swordtail stop being a part of the dark side and break out the Jedi Masters, and then Queen Wasp Vader looks at Cricket and says, I am the father. And suddenly Pineapple, the coolest one here, comes in with a lightsaber and turns Queen Wasp Vader into Queen Scarlet, which causes Tsunami to go into a fit of rage where she beats her up and then Darth Vader explodes and walks into Death Star. Luna, Lizard, Dusky, and Cottonmouth watch this and Luna looks at Lizard and says, Stop it. Get some help. So Lizard is like, okie dokie, you need to use the force to escape though. So Luna uses the force and her and Dusky wake up in the Untraut Cavern and Lizard wakes up for five seconds, says, I'm changing my name to America, turns into a bald eagle and ascends into the sky above. Then Cottonmouth turns into a ball of cotton because I f***ing hate his name. And Luna is like, nice. So now that the Death Star has exploded, Luna, Blue, Snoodoo, Bumblebee, Cricket, Swordtail, and Willow are reunited and are like, woohoo, friendship, and the Jedi Masters leave and go home, and I guess Moonwatcher, Kibli, and Winter are together now, and Pineapple's the best character in this book, but Tala is chillin' now, I think they got rid of Queens, and now they just have a parliament because they want to be British, and that's the end of Wings of Fire. Or at least it better be. Oh well. If anything else comes out, I'm not gonna read it anyways, so... I don't really give a shit. Let me know if you like this video or not. Eat your vegetables and have a great day or night.